just... I was lost, and I had nowhere to go. I had no when to go. Does that make sense? Time lays traps for the dead. It's never fair. His voice was a beacon. The light in the darkness that led me back to me. And to the world. You have a powerful connection, you two. Or will have. Or had. Possibly all three. And here he is, the other banisher. Greetings. Good day. Come, sit. It's been too long. Have we met? Of course we have. Just now. Also later. Decades ago. Never mind, it's good to see you, Red McRae. I told her our story. I hope you don't mind. Such an ordeal. I'm so very sorry you have to go through it. How hard it must be for you both. I... thank you. But now you're here together, and I'm glad. Because you'll only be able to end this together. You brought us here. Why? You have many questions, and I have little time. Your novice mentioned it. I am sorry. <laughs> I am not. Soon I'll be one with the trees. Root and bark, but that is not why I asked you here. Dearest dears, the path ahead is yet unclear, but know this. If you are to defeat the nightmare, your hearts must be open. Open, of course, to each other. No barriers. Your bond must be strong. How can we defeat it? How can we even begin to match its power? You surrender. Unconditionally. To each other. When you died, dear Antea, New Eden crumbled. But some yet live. Seek them out. Help them. The nightmare won't like that. No. You are, after all, a threat to her existence. And rightly so. She believes you cannot reach into her domain. She is wrong. There is a way. The Void. A dreadful place beneath both the Incarnate and the Invisible. When you have learned to walk the Void, you may use it to enter the Nightmare's den. First, you must free the people of New Eden from her grip. To reach New Eden and retrieve my body, we must help the very people who created the Nightmare in the first place? Yes. Excuse my lack of enthusiasm. Can we not just go back to the meeting house and do our jobs? You must release folk here from her grasp. Only then, through the void, may you reach New Eden Town and confront her. How do we access the void? Is there a ritual? In places, the void is breached. Follow the beacons, do not stray, and all will be well. Our seeker crafted you a tuning key. With it, you may open the breach. Don't linger. Time is fickle. We recently came across a cursed item and thought you could help us cleanse it. Really? Why us? Well, you know, spells, curses, witches. I was teasing. 
How fun it is to see you squirm. There are many ways to enchant an item, or dispel its curse. Seek her, may be of help. Go talk to her. She likes to tease you too. Ceridian, we'll be off. Before you leave, tell me, what did you choose? What do you mean? Each of you made a promise to the other. What was it? What did you choose? I chose to go. Mm -mm. How difficult it must be to follow this path. The greatest of the great mysteries elude us all. But have faith. For there to be peace, there must be an ending. The tuning key is on. The tuning key. Now I know how you pull your little disappearing trick. It's no trick. It's what we do to survive. Too many bastards out there was dead. This must be one of the breaches Ceridian mentioned. Yes. This is a void breach. But yours are a little further down, in the cave. You'll see. This one is special. It's the last and only way into New Eden Town since the bridge burned down. We could go back to New Eden right now? Why would you want to do that? The Nightmare is strong. She has New Eden by the proverbials. Loosen her grasp and maybe, just maybe, you can walk through that breach and live. All right, all right. We get it. You have your tuning key. Hold on to it for dear life. That shouldn't be a problem. Once through the breach, there's no turning back. Keep going and don't look back. We found a cursed object. An object? What object? A chest, locked and evidently cursed. A curse could mean different things, depending. What do you think happened? We found it in the wilderness. We think maybe someone bound a spirit to it for protection. Ah, I do believe you found a chest belonging to Fear God. How do we get it open? Why would you want to open it? That's demonology, and I'm not one for stepping in no demonology. Even if old Fear God wasn't the worst. But from what he told me, Fear God Waterbury, the man, not his ghost, kept a ritual of unbinding in his breviary. Do you have this breviary? No, but I know we can find it. He spent his last years in seclusion, deep in the dark woods. Go northeast from the hunter's camp. Keep to the east side of the trail until you can turn south. You should come to a clearing. He had a hut there. You forget things sometimes, so here. I'll write it down for you. We'll be going. Hope to talk again soon. Yes. I do so enjoy our little chats across the hem. Let me... Unclean spirit, leave now. Are you all right? I'll do. But that nightmare over there, we know so little about it. That worries me. What about you? Whatever the reason, that nightmare is here because of something these men and women did. 
New Eden reeks of their guilt. I died because of them. Curse these people. Curse them and their secrets and their sins. I'm sorry. So am I. Are those breaches really safe? We were protected. You heard the whispers. The despair and that one voice. It called to you. Something knew you were there. It saw you. I thought... For, for a moment, I thought of them. Those poor butchered boys. I swear in the void I heard their screaming. Wings. Sent to die for their sultan's pride. It was like I was back in the Balkans. Those ghosts are gone. You asked for their ascent and I gave it to them. They're not in the void. I know. This void. Is it hell? Is that what we saw? Is that what we've been sending all those ghosts we've banished? Or is it limbo? A timeless in-between filled with tortured souls. When we banish a ghost, we destroy it. The teaching is clear. What if the teaching is wrong? I heard the voices. They worry me too. But the teaching can't be wrong. We should have known where we were sending those poor souls. What if you end up there too? All is well. As long as we stay together, all is well. All right. You're right. All is well. I hope. Hold there. None in, none out. Not living nor dead. Name's Red McCraith. I'm obviously a banisher. Open the door there. I've business within. Your business is, if you'll excuse my articulating the evidence, not my business. I have my orders. You can't come in. I hear you, friend. What's your name? The name's Andrew White. You seem a pleasant fellow. I like a Scot, me, but standing here, I'm on duty. And when I'm on duty, I'm not your friend. Uh, listen, mate, folk in here have problems enough, and I can't be disobeying orders. Either priests or Pennington would have my guts, and I fancy neither. Who is this priest? May I speak with him? Him is a her. Helen Priest ain't here. She's on an excursion to the outpost, searching for supplies. Now, you want to lend a hand? Mrs. Priest and her party are overdue. You can't miss the outpost. It looks out across the valley. If you could find her, and make sure she doesn't die, you'd surely gain her favor. And favor, as they say, Opens doors. Get in a fight and find your boss and dig her out of whatever hole she's in. All right. I can do that. They have spectre troubles. Let's first clear the nearby nest to relieve the fort, then deal with the missing. How holds the fort? How holds the fort? Precariously, that's how. Our strength dwindles, and we'll soon run out of powder. Priest took Williams and that other fella, and off they went, scavenging for supplies. They've not yet returned. It's dangerous out there. The scavenger may easily become the carrion. Heard any good scuttle lately? The dead are coming, and you want to gossip. I admire your sang Freud, and that's the Lord's truth, but now, sir, is not the time. Right. I'll likely be back. Find our friends, Banisher. Or put them to rest. I'll try. As soon as I take care of the Spectre's nest, I'll go looking for the outpost. My bolt's are shot! <laughs> Behind you! Come <laughs> on. 
just high. I bet you can't cook. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day, just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. Why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly, I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. We found the rest of your men outside. They're gone. I'm sorry. We were overrun. I sent Matthews and Williams with the supplies to race for the hoist. This was a risky expedition. But Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. You're well capable of fighting the living, tis clear. It was reckless to think you could take on the dead. We have lost many of our comrades. We measured the risk. It was not reckless. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. As second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? I watched them die. Soldiers and miners, sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. I'm sorry. You've been through a lot. We have. We are, and will persist till we prevail. We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. I'm afraid I locked us in when I broke the latch. If there's a way out, we'll find it. Captain Bennington. No time, no way out, no hope, no way in. No time, no time at all. Captain Bennington, sir. Mr. McGrath, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work, a mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope, to gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. 
The job is done. There's no more open, little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, Macraith. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You save no one. You prolong the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. It is if you will not act. You're the officer. Take command. Surely you can't intend to do nothing. You sound like Priest. She has changed. Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. When our defences crumble at the last, the pit shall take us all. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope, and you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We hold till the last. We resist, till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Fair to say your tactical retreat from New Eden Town has not served you. The town was doomed to fall to the curse. We disagreed on everything. There was nothing left to do but leave. We did not know there'd be no escape. Millsmith gathered the board and the governor let the afeard flock to him. We never agreed on anything in the first place. The new smiths are holed up in the woods, planning soon to leave for Boston. They may leave for Boston, but the curse will follow. The curse will follow until their backs are against the wall. Skin and Kate have always been as fire and ice, but with Red and Antea gone. Little remained to keep the sisters together. A chasm of grief and rage yawned between them. Their bridges burned, and the camp stared into the abyss. Banishers, may I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw an officer alone. A proud man turned to stone, perhaps, by years of war. I saw a broken man. I did not see the tyrant you described. Inaction is tyranny. He will not act, but nor will he get the hell out of the way. I do not disagree, but the captain needs help. I too was a soldier. Broken and haunted. With Antea's help, I recovered. 
Pennington may need the same. Leave Pennington to me. The good folk of the fort need your help. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. And while we deal with the hordes of angry spectres, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. How goes it with Sebastian? I'm not sure. I had never let go of my grief. I was bereft. Empty. His absence gave me substance. I clung to it. Useless, really. My husband died in the dark with nothing but my handkerchief to soothe his last moments. And now, he's back. If each worthwhile thing in life is to be lived, and then when it is gone, to be grieved, then what now? I have to believe our love is enough. Love is hard work. We are bound to grieve all the different versions of ourselves. And theirs. I try to hold him and cannot. It taunts me. It was almost easier when he was gone. All things are fleeting. Gaze upon the ghost you love and you can't deny it. Bitter though the thought may be. Yes, tis a blessing and a curse. Yet against all reason, we persist. Let us make the most of time remaining. Though it be to walk these dark tunnels, I'll guide you as best I can. Thank you. When you're searching for the source of the wrath of the hordes of the dead, it's nice to bring a friend. I fear their anger justified. This place knows much tragedy. What shall we find down there? The rage of the Forsaken. They trusted him. He betrayed them. He abandoned them. I doubt they can be placated. We must press on. Stay close. 